How you guys doing? CGF here once again with another Giants video. I have some special draft content for you guys tonight. I have put together the ultimate list of New York Giants draft busts. I have every draft bust from 2022 to 1981. It has been quite an undertaking, to be honest with you guys, but I really believe there is some value to talk about the draft busts of the New York Giants through several GMs, Joe Shane, Jerry Reese, Ernie Arcorzi, and the great George Young. We are going to talk about players that are from your grandfather's and father's generation. You go, we're going to talk about players that we're very familiar with currently on the Giants roster. We are going to be going through the gamut. We are going to be talking about players that were very disappointing, as well as the way the Giants could have gone if they chose not to choose these players. So I'm not going to waste too much time because this is going to be quite an undertaking, quite a long video. So Let's get started. Let's get started with the Joe Shane era, which starts in 2022, and it is still going on here in present day as we get ready for the NFL draft, which will be taking place less than six weeks from now, starting on April 25th in Detroit, Michigan. So let's look back at 2022 to start. So in 2022, a couple of draft notes here. The Giants finished 4-13 in, in 2021 under Joe Judge. 2022 was the first year of the Shane and Dable regime. The Giants highlighted their draft by picking two players in the first round. The first one, Kayvon Thibodeau, and the second one, Evan Neal. Two other players of note the Giants picked in this draft were Wandell Robinson in round two and Daniel Bellinger in round four. Four. So are you guys ready? Let's get into the busts. There's a lot of them if we go over 35 plus years of Giants seasons and drafts. First one we're going to talk about is Evan Neal. And I obviously hope this changes soon. But right now, I just don't think you could say anything else about him not being a bust. He was drafted seventh overall from Alabama. He's been a turnstile at times. The Giants passed on Tyler Smith in order to draft Evan Neal. 10 penalties in two years, and he's also missed 14 games in two seasons. You look at his PFF stats. This is from 2023. 39.8 overall, 38.5 pass blocking, and 51.1 run block. And you have to wonder how much of that was actually because of injury or technique or lack of motivation. But we'll find out if Evan Neal is a bust, if he's going to be eventually moved over to guard. But as of this moment, I am putting Evan Neal down as a bust. The next bust we're, bust we're going to talk about, and maybe you could say that some of this is just bad circumstances, is Joshua Azudu. He was drafted third round, pick 67 in this draft. He's from North Carolina. The Giants passed on Bernard Raymond, who plays for the Colts, who's a really good player, as well as Dylan Parham. He started 12 games in two years. He's missed a lot of times with injury as well as inconsistent play. He also was our backup left tackle when Aaron Andrew Thomas went down. That was quite a disaster. So Josh Azuda's 2023 PFF stats, 42.4 overall, 39.3 pass blocking and 53.4 run blocking. So Josh Azudu, you hope that he can get his act together. Maybe Carmen Brasillo can get him on the right track because he is headed towards bust territory. All right, now we move to the Dave Gettleman era, the wonderful Dave Gettleman era. As you can see, he is very focused right here with his stacks of papers, his, his Vaseline. <laughs> hand sanitizer on the table and his binder full of prospects right in front of him. So Dave Gettleman, God bless his soul. Let's get into some of the Dave Gettleman picks during his time with the New York Giants as general manager. So 2021, we're going to go to 2021 first. 
2021, some notes about 2021. The Giants finished 6-10 in 2020, the previous season under Joe Judge. This was the last year of the Judge and Gettleman regime when we talk about this draft. The Giants traded back in this draft with the Chicago Bears, the famous trade back from 11 to 20 so the Bears could get Justin Fields, who just recently was traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. This The move gained a first rounder for 2021, which the Giants used on Evan Neal, and it, but it caused them to lose Micah Parsons, who went immediately to the Dallas Cowboys at pick number 12. And of course, the Giants selected the enigma that is Kadarius Toney, who I'm sure we will be talking about in a second. So they selected him at 20. So let's talk about the bust from this draft. Hey, look who it is. It's our buddy, Kadarius Tony. Look at that smile. The young Joka, the young Joka, who is a Joka and is probably going to be out of the league soon. 2023 20, stats in 13 games, 27 receptions, 169 yards, and a touchdown. He was drafted overall 20th by us via trade with Chicago. As I explained before, we moved back and we drafted him. He is an aspiring rapper, just like Darren Waller. He's also a rebel rouser. He's a guy who likes to pick on women in the Giants community, unfortunately. I'm sorry if you, Mal, you're one of the ladies that he unfairly picked on. Just not a nice guy. He has also picked fights with other Giants fans. So he lasted with the Giants for one full season before being traded to the Kansas City Chiefs. And while he was on the team with the Giants. He didn't really play. He kept getting hurt. It was one thing or the other. He was benched in Super Bowl um, Roman numeral, Roman numeral, Roman numeral. I, I, I think it was 57. Players who could have been drafted instead of Kadarius Tony, who were available at the time, were Christian Darasaw, Gregory Rousseau, and Landon Dickerson. That was not a good move by the Gettleman and Judge regime. Aziz Ojolari, okay, Aziz Ojolari, a guy who's still on the Giants roster for now, a guy who I wish the Giants would trade because he is a walking medicine cabinet. In 2023, 11 games, two and a half sacks, career 35 games, 16 sacks. He was drafted second overall, 50th by the Giants. He has a brother who plays for Arizona. He is frequently injured. He is injured all the time. That's why I want the Giants to trade him. But when he's on the field, he's actually a pretty good player. Players the Giants could have drafted inside instead of Aziz, Sam Cosmi, Jeremiah Ooko Koromoa, Nick Bolton, and Creed Humphrey, who was really highly liked by Bad Dog. If you listen to Bad Dog's Giants channel, he loved Creed Humphrey, and for every right he did, he's a really good player, and he is having a hell of an NFL career. But unfortunately, we drafted Aziz Ojolari, who, like I said, just can't stay healthy. Here's another one. Aaron Robinson, 2023 stats. There's none. He was injured. He's been injured a lot with the Giants. So far, he's played in 11 games with the Giants and two starts. He was expected to do a lot. He was drafted in the third round, 71st overall. As I said, he's frequently injured. He's injured a lot, just like Aziz. Players who the Giants could have gone with instead of Aaron Robinson, Osa Adigizua, which we will talk about a Adigizua brother in a little bit. Nico Collins and Amon Ross St. Brown. Why couldn't we just draft an Amon Ross St. Brown? We wouldn't have to be worrying about a wide receiver most likely right now. But, you know, unfortunately, Gettleman, <laughs> he didn't pick the right player. And that ha has happened a lot with Gettleman. Ellerson Smith. Let's not forget El Ellerson Smith, the freak of nature. I think he's 6'7". From Iowa State, if I remember correctly, a Cyclone 2023 did not play. He's not on the Giants anymore, unfortunately. Um, he was waived in 2023. Career 13 games with the Giants. One forced fumble, baby. One forced fumble, no sacks. He was drafted in the fourth round, 116th overall. Like Aaron Rodgers, Art Robinson, and Aziz Ojolari, he was frequently injured. He never was healthy enough to play. And he was a project who was picked too early. Some players the Giants could have drafted instead of good old Ellerson Smith. Ramondre Stevenson, the guy I was very high of on the Big Blue message board, Big Blue View message board. Brevin Jordan 
and Kenneth Gainwell, the good Philadelphia Eagle. All right, so we go to 2020. That was a disaster. Let's talk about 2020 now. So a little recap on the 2020 draft. Giants finished 4-12 in 2019 under Shermer, his final season. 2019 was the last year of the Eli Manning era. He retired. 2019 was the first year of the Daniel Jones era. Oh, I'm sure a lot of Giants fans are happy about that. The Giants selected Andrew Thomas number four in the 2020 draft, which was also the COVID draft, a draft that was conducted by Roger Goodell from his trusty leather chair in his basement. The Giants selected Xavier McKinney with a 36 pick in the second round, who the Giants recently decided not to extend a contract to. So Xavier McKinney now is a Green Bay Packer. So let's talk about a bust, Matt Pert. Oh, we love Matt Pert, you know, from Connecticut, I think it was. 2023, eight games, one start for the Giants. Certain old offensive line issues, you would have thought a guy who was drafted in the third round, 99th overall, could have been starting for us, who's a veteran, but nope. He's another guy like I spoke of before, which was a commonality with many Gettleman draft picks. Injured. He was injured a lot. He had only seven starts in 43 games for the Giants. He could have been drafted by somebody else because the Giants, in his place, could have drafted Alex Highsmith, John Simpson, DJ Warnham, and Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis, who, if the Giants did draft him, perhaps he would be there waiting for Brian Dable when he showed up. But unfortunately for the Giants, Giants drafted Matt Pert, and he is no longer with them as of this moment. And that was the only bust, believe it or not, from 2018 to talk about, serious bust. So let's get to 2019, and let me give you guys a little bit of a hint. I'm not putting Daniel Jones down as a bust, but he is bordering really close to that, so he better find a way to salvage his career or he will be a bust on my list. So the Giants in 2018 finished 5-11 and under Pat Shermer. Daniel Jones in 2019 in Nashville was drafted number six, much to the chagrin of many Giants fans and content creators, guys like Bad Dog and The Entertainer, who I'll talk about later. There is a Giants player who looks like The Entertainer doing my research. I found one, and we will talk about that if you guys stick around for the rest of this video. Giants passed on Josh Allen, who went right after Daniel Jones, seventh to Jacksonville, and he is putting together a really nice career. For Jacksonville, Dexter Lawrence was drafted 17th, who he was acquired. That pick was acquired in the Odell Beckham trade. It, that obviously has worked out really well. Dexter Lawrence is a top five NFL player in my mind. He's a really dominant interior defense lineman, and I only expect him to get better. And a sneaky good pick in this draft was Darius Slayton, who was picked in the fifth round. And I think he's pretty much led the Giants in re re receiving yards for the last couple of seasons. So. Great pick, Gettleman. You got one right, Darius Slayton, though he does have dropsies from time to time if you watch every Giants game, and usually at the worst time. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the busts. Uh, first bust is an obvious bust, and it's DeAndre Baker. DeAndre Baker, first-round pick, 26 career games, no interceptions for the Giants, and he did not play this past season. Why? Because he is pretty much out of the league. He was drafted first round 30th overall by the aforementioned New York Giants. He had some legal troubles, which are still a bit unclear, but apparently, allegedly, he was part of some robbery scheme where there was like a poker game, I think it was, and him and his buddy came in and there was a gun and someone was threatened. So as a result of that, he was released by the Giants in September of 2020. What a disaster. Like many of the picks for the Giants, total disaster. Who could we have drafted besides DeAndre Baker? Now get ready to cry because some of these names were pretty damn good. Caleb McGarry, Debo Samuel. Could you imagine if we drafted Debo freaking Samuel? Cody Ford, Sean Murphy Bunting, who seems to be on every other team every other year. He's still in the league and he's still a decent player. Dalton Riz Risner, who I think is a free agent, who is a decent player. A.J. freaking Brown, which is on the Eagles. And of course, Miles Sanders, who was on the Eagles for a while, and now he's on the Panthers. Last last time I checked, but he hasn't really been playing very well. So DeAndre Burt Baker, terrible pick by Dave Gettleman. Oh, here's a guy that it's hard for me to put on this list because I was so high on him back in the day on the Big Blue View message board. I thought he was going to be 
something else for the Giants, and he turned out to be a massive bust. And that guy is O'Shane Zimenez, who had his last chance with the Giants last season. Didn't really work out. He had one tackle, one solo tackle in 2023. Suit me up, coach. I can probably get out there and get a solo tackle even at the ripe age of 40-something. Okay, career, 48 games, six and a half sacks, which most of those sacks were his first year in the league. One forced fumble. He's drafted 95th overall by the Giants. He never lived up to his expectations from his days at 1A Old Dominion. Now I think Old Dominion is, is one, but at the time they were full championship series caliber back when he was drafted. He flashed for one year, as I said, and he disappeared like a thief in the night, just has disappeared. So who could the Giants have drafted if they didn't draft good old O'Shane? Well, they could have drafted Dawson Knox, Mike Edwards, Alexander Madison, Max freaking Crosby. Imagine having him on that defensive line and CJ Gardner Johnson, who seems to be moving around a lot. So he's still around and he's still a really good player. So the Giants could have had one of those guys, but they picked O'Shane Zimenez instead because Dave Gettleman listened to me. I'm sorry, fans. <laughs> he listened to me or he was reading Big Blue View message board. I don't know, but the Giants got O'Shane and he O'Shaned his way out of town. All right, 2018, okay, so now we are in 2018, and this was the previous year in 2017 was when the Giants finished 3-13, and and that was the Ben McAdoo um, sinking ship, which I knew was coming at the time because based on how he entered as the head coach, I knew eventually after the boat trip and the ill-fitting suit and the weird behavior and him talk, telling these stories that just sounded really stupid and, and talking about the Duke all the time as an allusion, I think, to the older Elder Mara. It was just, he was a weird cat, man, Ben McAdoo. But he was right about Patrick Mahomes, okay? Got to give McAdoo credit. He could evaluate talent. He's just crazy as a fox. So, so what happened in 2017? Eli Manning's consecutive game streak ended, which was as a result of Ben McAdoo really being pissed off at the ownership and putting in Geno Smith, which was another guy he was right about who didn't get a chance, unfortunately, until recently with Seattle. But Geno Smith started that game. I think it was against the Raiders. Giants lost that game. And it wasn't very long after that, that McAdoo and Reese were both fired and, um, McAdoo was replaced by Steve Spagnolo as an interim, and Dave Gettleman came in, and Pat Shermer came in in the offseason, and they were the replacements. The Giants in 2018 draft drafted the great Saquon Barkley, or not so great Saquon Barkley, the trader, the Benedict Arnold, who just went to the freaking Eagles. So, yeah, that really worked out well, Dave. Good job. You could have drafted Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen. Lamar Jackson, if you watched my quarterbacks from the first round since 1998 video that I put out about a month ago. Josh uh, Lamar Jackson is one of the elite quarterbacks that I felt that has been drafted in the first round since 1998. There's three others. If you watch the video, you'll find out who those three others are and you can find that in the archive. And then the great Josh Allen, who is right a step below that elite level, I'll give you a hint on that. It, he's not one of those four quarterbacks, Josh Allen, but he's not far off based on his career to this point. And apparently John Mara really liked Josh Allen. So let's talk about the busts from this draft. And let's start with Lorenzo Carter, a guy that at times really flashed for the Giants. 2023 stats, 17 games, three sacks, one forced fumble. Career with the Giants, or career altogether, 83 games, 21 and a half sacks, four forced fumbles. He was drafted third over third rounds, third 66th overall by the Giants back in 2018. Couldn't stay on the field with the Giants. He was another guy, another Gettleman guy who couldn't stay healthy. 14 and a half sacks in four years with the Giants. But who could we have drafted if we went in a different direction? Well, we could have had Fred Warner. Derek Nani, who's a good player, Sam Hunter, Rasheen Green, Michael Gallup, who seems to always be sticking around the Cowboys, and Orlando Brown. So, yeah, the Giants could have had something maybe slightly better, but they stuck with another guy who got injured a lot. And he's still in the league, but he's not a dominant player or a Pro Bowl caliber player, but he's more of like a, I guess you could say, a backup caliber player. So, Lorenzo Carter, 
Sorry, just not very good. Kyle Loletta. Oh, man. Now, now, let me tell you, there's there were a couple of quarterbacks you'll see on this in this video, guys that I guess you could say were slated to take over for Eli Manning. And this was one of them, Kyle Loletta from Richmond, the Richmond Spider. He played in two career games and he had an interception. Not bad, I guess. For a guy, guy who was, well, it actually is very bad. I probably could throw an interception in the game. Drafted fourth round, 108th overall. He was arrested. And he was charged with eluding police and resisting arrest. This was the Weehawken incident. So what exactly happened was he was late for training camp. He probably had a, a hot chicken bed with him or he overslept because he was drunk. I don't know what happened, but... He lived in probably lived in Daniel Jones's condo building somewhere in Hoboken. He said, "Oh crap, I got to get to the Giants practice facility." And two days in a row, apparently, he went the wrong way, and he was trying to turn around, and the cops caught him, and he tried to elude the cops because he didn't want to get in trouble, and he was charged with with eluding police and res resisting arrest, and that was the end of his Giants. Tenure, pretty much. He was waived in 2019. And then the Giants could have dra drafted someone else, obviously. Many times we'll see in this video that Giants could have drafted someone much better. They could have drafted the great Darren Armstrong. He's not that great, but he had a great game against the Giants the first game of the year last year when the Giants totally got throttled 40 to nothing. Yeah, Jordan Whitehead, Will Disley, who's a decent tight end, Kazir White, Avante Maddox, former Eagle, Dalton Schultz, who's now on the, on the Texans, and Josh Sweat, another Eagle. So, yeah. And I think Loletta did wind up on the Eagles practice squad or as a backup for a little while, but he never did anything in his career. And now we move out of the Gettleman years into the Jerry Reese years, which I didn't realize was longer than I thought. I thought Jerry Reese took over around 2009, 2010. Doing my research, my deep research, I find out that he was around a little bit longer. So let's talk about the great G Jerry Reese, who in concert basically worked with Mark Ross and then pretty much worked off of Ernie Accorsi early in his time with the Giants. So let's talk about Jerry Reese. Let's talk about 2017. OK, this was the season the Giants in, in 2016. We're going to talk about the draft, but let's talk about 2016. In 2016, Giants finished 11 to five under first year head coach Ben McAdoo. If you remember that offseason, Giants spent a ton of money in free agents and guys like Janoris Jenkins, um, Snacks Harrison, and it just they had a good year. And then obviously the undisciplined uh, head coach. The guy with the ill fitting suit, as you can see there, just couldn't control Odell, couldn't control the personalities, and his head coaching experience with the Giants imploded. And now I think he's on the Patriots as a as associate head coach or a, a, some sort of assistant. But Ben McAdoo is slowly wiggling his way back into the NFL, but he just he's a great talent evalu evaluator. I think he has to get himself up in the front office and help quarterback evaluations because he is pretty damn good about that but I won't say he's the best coach in the world so Giants returned to the playoffs for the first time since 2011 in 2016 they were eliminated in the first round against Green Bay that was the famous Giants just couldn't catch anything Odell had a horrible game it was cold Eli was trying his best the everyone came off the bus pre-game in mismatching clothing. No one looked professional. The bus was a mess. Those were the rumors everyone said. And that was pretty much the beginning and the end for Ben McAdoo. He just didn't know it. I knew it if you were following me on Big Blue View message, Big Blue View message board at the time, I was definitely saying that his time would be numbered. And people called me crazy because he had just come off 11 and 5 season. But Ben McAdoo, God bless his soul, so this was the Giants draft where in 2017, when they drafted the great Evan Ingram, who had his share of doubters and haters in New York. He had his share of drops at critical situations that cost Giants games, probably made Joe Judge lose some hair. And he wound up moving on to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where he's doing very well right now. And then the Giants also had a solid pick in Dalvin Tomlinson, who they picked in the second round at pick 55. So in 2017, the Giants early on had a really good draft. Now let's talk in, about some of the busts. All right, let's start with Davis Webb. Okay, Davis Webb came back to the Giants, I think,
think it was two years ago um, in um, Bat- and B- Davis' first season because there was the connection in Buffalo. But Davis Webb is pretty much out of the league right now. He didn't play last season. In two games, he threw for 168 yards and a touchdown. He was drafted third overall, a third overall, no, third round, 87th overall by the Giants. Threw one touchdown pass with the Giants, as I alluded to before, in his second stint with the Giants. Could have drafted other players instead of Davis Webb. We could have drafted Donta Foreman, who's a pretty nice running back. We could have drafted Jordan Lewis. Trey Hendrickson, who's had a really good career with the Bengals. John U. Smith, who's a good tight end. And Carl Lawson, who is one of those in-between guys who, who has had some flashes, but... Davis Webb, man, he was another guy who was supposed to replace Eli Manning. Some people will say he never really got a legitimate shot with the Giants, thus not getting a legitimate shot in the NFL. I guess we'll never know if he was any good. But for someone who was drafted 87th overall, you really hoped he would have more of an impact. And it was pretty much a wasted pick for the Giants. And now we move on to 2016. So 2016 draft highlights. The previous year in 2015, Giants finished 6-10. and 10. 2015 was the final season of the great Tom Coughlin. We all remember how that ended, that final press conference where he stormed off the stage and he took a beeline for the door and didn't shake Mara's hand. Uh, (laughs) You have to wonder if it was just this terrible mismanagement, and you will see a commonality through the next few years of terrible draft picks and lots of busts by Jerry Reese. And I commented earlier today on Twitter I said that I didn't realize how many bad picks Jerry Reese had, and we are going to get into them. Believe me, there's a lot of them. So the best pick in this draft was Sterling Shepard, and he just retired this past season, drafted in the second round, pick number 40. He was the bridge from this era to this recent era that we're in right now where the Giants are still, unfortunately, struggling. So let's talk about this guy right here, Eli Apple. Oh, my God. And Why did we draft Eli Apple? Because Jerry Reese panicked. The story is there were several picks on the board. The Giants were eyeing. I think one was Roquan Smith, a guy that the Giants are still trying to get to this day. And there was also a tackle. I think it's he's kind of escaped my name. I think it was the Tennessee guys. I don't remember exactly who it is, but look it up. I I do remember Giants were targeting two players and two teams including the Bears, jumped in front of them. And this caused a panic for Jerry Reese because Jerry Reese wasn't prepared. So they wound up overdrafting Eli Apple, who turned out to be a terrible pick. So let's look at his stats from this past season. 10 games, one interception career. 98 games with six interceptions. He was drafted in the first round by the Giants' 10th overall, which is a highway robbery crime Terrible. How could you draft that guy at number 10? Uh, Ohio State cornerback. There's been a mixed bag in the NFL, and he has been terrible. He was traded to the New Orleans Saints on, in October of 2018 when the Giants were starting to shed their roster, trying to rebuild with Gettleman. He was embarrassed in the Super Bowl with the Bengals. How could we forget that? He was embarrassed. He's bounced around the league a bit. With the Giants, obviously, New Orleans, but also with Cincinnati, Carolina, and Miami. And the Giants could have made some better picks. Here are some of the players they could have picked. They could have picked Sheldon Rankins, Laramie freaking Tunsil. I know the bong killed his draft stock, the bong video that was somebody released right before the draft. But Tunsil is a franchise left tackle. Imagine if the Giants were able to draft him. Taylor Decker, William Jackson, Shaq Lawson, and Kenny Clark are players the Giants could have had, but they unfortunately took Eli Apple, who wasn't very good and still isn't very good. Darian Thompson, another Jerry Reese brilliant pick. What can you say about Darian Thompson? He didn't stick around in the league for a little bit. He played 63 games with only two interceptions. He was more of like a safety type player. I think they wanted him to be a hybrid. He was from Boise State. You know the connection that the Cowboys have with Boise State. That's how he almost resurrected his career because he wound up on the Cowboys. But the Giants drafted him in the third round, 71st overall. He was released in 2018, and as I said, he had his best success with Dallas. And he's been out of the league since 2021. The Giants could have dra- could have drafted a bunch of good players. Kenyon Drake, Joe Thune, Isaac Semeloa, Austin Hooper, Kendall Fuller, Graham Gasgow, and Justin Simmons. A lot of great players that the Giants, unfortunately, 
didn't draft because they went with this guy. So this guy is out of the league, and it's another Jerry Reese failure. B.J. Goodson, another Jerry Reese failure who flashed for maybe five seconds with the Giants, but he went out of favor, and he was traded eventually to the Packers for compensation, which never came because he never lived up to benchmarks. So in 67 games, he had four interceptions. He was drafted in the fourth round, 109th overall. And just to interrupt to tell you, I am going basically over my classification for a bust as anyone in between the first and fourth round. I mean, you're not really expecting much from guys from the fifth onwards, but if you look at good teams like – the Ravens and Seattle, they always have guys that contribute that are down, I guess, later in the draft, but just had to break on in there and tell you how I'm doing this. But he was traded, as I said, to the Packers in September of 2019. He was traded for a conditional seventh round pick, which never panned out because he just didn't do well. He was out of the league by 2021 and the Giants could have tra- drafted guys like Tyler Higby, Miles Killebrew, Hassan Redgeway. David Ominata, Devondre Campbell, Blake Martinez, and Dak Prescott. Can you believe the Giants could have potentially had Dak Prescott on their team? They could have if they didn't draft B.J. Goodson, but they drafted B.J. Goodson. So let's move to 2015 here. And here, <laughs> for those of you who are too young, the pitcher on the right is Eric Flowers, and the pitcher accompanying Eric Flowers is a woman named Marsha Warfield, who was on the 80 sitcom Night Court. For those old people like me, you know what I'm talking about. Watch an old rerun of Night Court. Marsha Warfield has to be Eric Flowers' mother or a long-lost sister because those two look very similar. <laughs> So uh, let's recap. In 2014, the Giants finished 6-10. and 10. In 2015, they drafted the terrible Eric Flowers, who just insisted he was a right. He was he insisted he was an offensive tackle, but he was really a guard. And the Giants at the time couldn't figure out, move the freaking guy to guard. So they kept him at, at left tackle, and he kept getting destroyed, and he pretty much contributed to the downfall of Eli Manning. So... Eric Flowers probably would have been better hanging out at the night court with Marsha Warfield, but he say the Giants are slow sometimes, and eventually he got off the team. He wound up moving on to the Commanders, and he had a pretty late revival to his career, and unfortunately for him, didn't last. We'll get into Marsha War. Oh, sorry, Eric Flowers in a second. Landon Collins was picked in the second round, pick 33. He was a guy who really was good for the Giants early in his career. And then he wanted too much money and he wound up going to Washington. And he did come back to the Giants. He was very popular in the charity scene with the Giants. He did the softball game, which I think now is done by Dexter Lawrence. License plate guys usually organizing that. But Landon Collins was a guy who flashed early for the Giants in his career. And then Bobby Hart, believe it or not, was drafted by the Giants. And I bring up Bobby Hart because he was drafted in the seventh round and he's kind of stuck around a bit. He's not very good, but he's, but he's kind of adequate at times. And he played, I think he played for a while, maybe with Miami. And he also played for the Cincinnati Bengals. So Bobby Hart, God bless your soul. So let's get to Eric Flowers. We'll talk about him quickly. Oh man, 105 games. Drafted ninth overall by the Giants. Oh, Lord. Released in 2018, out of the league in, since 2021. Never worked out as offensive tackle. Here are some of the players the Giants could have had instead of Flowers if they chose to do so. Andrus Pete, who is still in the league and still a really good player. Devontae Parker, Eric Armstead, Marcus Peters, and DJ Humphreys. So could have had one of those guys, but we got Eric Flowers, and it took us a long time to get rid of Eric Flowers. Oh, and I talked about his brother earlier, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Owa Zugiugia. <laughs> uh, 18 games with the Giants, no sacks. He was drafted in the third round, another Jerry Reese disaster, 74th overall. He was suspended by the league in 2017, and that led to his release by the Giants, and he's been out of the league since 2018. His brother's a lot better than him. Let's just put it that way. Could have drafted guys like Chris Conley, Duke Williams, P.J. Williams, who's not a really good cornerback, but they could have drafted him. Uh, Jordan Hicks, Daniel Hunter, who is still doing very well in the league, and he just got a bag of money, I think, from the Texans. Tide Montgomery, 
and Steven Nelson. So the Giants could have made a better pick, but unfortunately, Jerry Reese made a terrible pick. All right, let's move to 2014 now. Now you know why the Giants have been so bad for so long. Just bad draft picks. All right, 20, 2014 draft highlights. In 2013, they finished 7-9. and nine. In 2014, they drafted the great flash in the pan. Odell Beckham Jr. for a couple of years looked like he was going to be a Hall of Fame, drop dead Hall of Famer. He's still here. He's still around. He's still looking for a place to go, maybe back to the Giants, maybe to Philadelphia. I actually think he's going to go with Philly to rub it in the Giants' face. And we'll see what happens there. He was the 12th pick for the Giants. Giants also drafted in the fifth round Devin Kennard, who's the son of the former Giants um, player Terry Kennard, I think I talk about later. And he eventually made his name for, for himself with the Detroit Lions. He's not really doing anything anymore, but he did have a resurgence with the Detroit Lions. So let's talk about busts. Uh, this one hurts. But it's it's honest. It's an honest bust. Weston Richburg, okay, 79 games. He was expected to be a solidified center for the Giants for a long time. He didn't last very long. He was drafted in the second round, 43rd overall. He departed for free agency in 2018. It was actually a smart move not re-signing him because he was out of the league one year later. The Giants could have drafted some really nice players if they didn't draft OBJ early. They could have drafted guys like Devontae Adams, Allen Robinson. They could have drafted Jimmy Garoppolo as a backup, perhaps, for Eli Manning. And Morgan Moses, who's still in the league, and he's a backup on the Jets now. So Western Richburg was a guy who was supposed to solidify the center of our offensive line. He came in after Kevin Boss, and uh, Sean O'Hara was before him. And Western Richburg just wasn't that good long term. And this one here is a terrible disaster, and his name was Jay Bromley from Syracuse University. Uh, I think he was from the Bronx, if I remember correctly. They talked that up big as a dream come true for him. Coming to the Giants, he turned out to be a nightmare because he didn't do anything for us. Uh, 57 games, he only managed two sacks. He was drafted, believe it or not, in the third freaking round by Jerry Reese. (laughs) 74th overall. Was this a Tom Coughlin pick because of Syracuse? You notice there's a lot of Syracuse guys that were drafted by the Giants during Coughlin's time. Some of them worked out, obviously, like Justin Pugh for a while, and others not so much. So he was one of them that didn't work out. He departed free agency in 2018, and he never signed with anyone, and he's out of the league. You know, he's somewhere else doing something in his retirement. We could have drafted instead Gabe Jackson, John Brown, Trey Turner, Jarek McKinnon, and Devonta Freeman, who eventually would play for us with a cup of coffee. But Devonta Freeman was mostly with the Atlanta Falcons, the Dirty Birds. Andre Williams. So you talk about those all those running backs that were available there. The Giants, unfortunately, they should have drafted a running back with that third-round pick. Because in the fourth round, they drafted Andre Williams, the guy from Boston College, who just... It's another guy who got injured a lot, guy who didn't really do anything for the Giants. 41 games, 1,000 yards, and eight touchdowns. He was drafted in the fourth round, as I said. They waived him in 2016. He was out of the league by 2017. And the Giants could have had a bunch of other guys. They could have had a guy like James White, who is a Super Bowl champion. Could have had Anthony Hitchens, Pierre Desir, Trey Boston, Brett Urban, who has had a nice career, I think, with the Bills. And Cam Fleming, Fleming, who did play for the Giants for a short period of time, who's been mostly a backup tackle. But Andre Williams was another blown opportunity by the Giants and Jerry Reese. 2013, now we move to 2013. We're moving right along as we head to 1981, which I believe is the beginning of the modern era of the New York Giants. Of course, in 1981 was when the Giants drafted Lawrence Taylor. So everything before 1981, in my mind, is ancient history. Because at the time, in 1981, I was a toddler. And I obviously have no memory of anything before 1981. So let's go on and talk about 19... It's not 1981 yet. It's 2013. Let's talk about 2013 draft. So the year before, in 2012, Giants finished 9-7. and Giants drafted the aforementioned Justin Pugh. Remember I talked about Syracuse picks? Justin Pugh, who was on the Giants last season, who, who knows, may come back. He was the 19th pick in the first round for the Giants. And he also drafted a guy by the name of Jonathan Hankins, pick 49, who I think is 
still bouncing around the league, if I remember correctly. He may be retired now, but he, I think he was in the league last season. It was one of those defensive tackles the Giants let go. He's a depth guy, but he was a pretty decent player back in the day for the Giants. So those were the highlights from 2013, as you can see Justin View getting set to get himself off the couch. So let's start with this disaster, the, the monster, the Demontre Moore guy who was drafted by Jerry Reese, another disaster of a pick. And if you've been watching this, Jerry Reese, how many disaster middle round, late round picks has Jerry Reese had? And it, it's not just late round, it's, it's early round too. This one is, a, is another disaster. 66 games, 11 sacks, picked in the third round, 81st overall. They wound up waving him in 2015, bounced around the league, was suspended by the NFL, has been out of the league since 2020. Giants could have had John Jenkins, Logan Ryan, Jordan Reed, and Jerem Harmon. So Demontre Moore, the monster, whatever you want to call him, he was a guy who was a pass rusher, was supposed to be the next JPP, he turned out to be really bad. So didn't work out. Ryan Nassib, and here's the Syracuse connection. All right, Ryan Nassib is another Syracuse player. He's another Syracuse quarterback, just like Tommy DeVito. Uh, five games, five career games, 128 yards, one touchdown in five games in the NFL. He was drafted fourth round, 110 overall by the Giants. Became a free agent in 2017. Giants did not get rid of him. He stuck around for a while, and he's been out of the league since 2018. Here's some of the guys the Giants could have had if they didn't go with Mr. Nassib. They could have William Golston, who played for Tampa for a while. Kyle Ustek, who is probably the greatest fullback in the history of football, one of the greatest fullbacks in the history of football. And Kenny Stills, who had a little bit of a cup of coffee with Miami where he was pretty good. And then he's kind of petered out and I don't think he's in the league anymore, but Ryan Nassib was a guy that the Giants picked up as a backup for Eli. And he just never really did anything. He never got on the field because Eli pretty much never was going to miss time. So Ryan Nassib was another Syracuse guy who just never really did anything for the Giants. 2012. All right. And this is a happy memory for us Giants fans. That picture right there, Eli Manning winning our fourth Super Bowl in 2011. Giants in 2011 finished 9-7, and seven, and they went on another improbable run, knocking off Atlanta at home, and then going into Green Bay, knocking off the Packers, knocking off the 49ers, and beating the Patriots again, which you remember that Chase Blackburn interception at the end of the game, sealed it as he jumped high up in the air, and stole the ball from Rob Gunkowski, who still can't kick a field goal, apparently, for, for a fan duel. Even with Kay Adams' beautiful face watching, he still can't kick a field goal. So, well, that's another story for another day. So the Giants in this draft picked David Wilson with the 32nd pick, and we will talk about David Wilson right now. And unfortunately, David Wilson, who I believe, if he didn't get hurt, really probably would have had a different career for the Giants. In 21 games, he had 504 yards and five touchdowns, but his real use was kind of like Devin Hester. He was a punt returner. He was a kick returner. He was electric. He was really freaking good. And he had a season career ending injury. Giants drafted him 32nd overall. He retired in 2015 and when you see CEI, you don't want to see CEI. That means career ending injury. And he had a spinal neck injury, which when I heard it at the time, it broke my heart and broke many of your hearts, I'm sure, because David Wilson, is, well, it would have been really good for the Giants. And unfortunately, sometimes bad luck will rear its ugly head. And there's another case shortly we'll be talking about of bad luck that leads to a bust. So David Wilson, God bless your soul. It could have been somewhere else, could have been something else in some other universe, but unfortunately you got hurt and didn't work out the way any of us wanted. And I'm sure it didn't work out for you. So if we didn't draft David Wilson, we could add Janoris Jack Rabbit Jenkins a little earlier than we wound up having him. We could add Alshon Jeffrey, who had a really good stretch with the Bears for a little bit. Cordy Glenn, Bobby Wagner, part of Legion of Boom, and Levante David, who played really well, who has played very well for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Reuben freaking Randall. He's another one. <laughs> Jerry Reese, terrible pick. All right, R Reuben Randall, 64 games, 188 rece receptions for 2,644 yards and 20 touchdowns. 
not really good. <laughs> I still don't think it's good because he didn't live up to expectations of a second round pick. Pick 63rd overall, became a free agent in 2016, out of the league since 2016. Yeah, I think he tried to get on with the Philadelphia Eagles, kind of like Saquon, but it didn't really work out. And that's something Saquon should know. A lot of these guys who play for the Giants tend to go to the Eagles and doesn't always work out for them. So be aware <laughs> there's some sort of jinx about former Giants going to the Eagles. But he's been out of the league since 2016, and the Giants could have drafted a, a whole slew of other players. They could have drafted Olivier Vernon, who eventually came to the Giants via that trade with the Browns. And Miami, that was that three-way weird trade when we traded Odell. I think it was – I think Olivier Ver- – actually, I think he was on the Browns. But he did – no, we signed Olivier Vernon. That's what it was. We didn't trade for him. Uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, Russell Wilson, who now is on the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, won a Super Bowl, fourth-round pick. He was, and he was really good for Seattle for a long time. And I was advocating for Wilson to come to the Giants as a backup or perhaps a bridge quarterback. But uh, Giants didn't – sign him because apparently according to published reports, they did not want to guarantee him a starting job over Daniel Jones. Take that for what that is. Demario Davis and Tremaine Johnson were other players Giants could have picked and they wound up picking Ruben Randall who had his share of terrible games for the Giants. Uh, Here's another one. Another Jerry Reese pick. Jaron Hosley. (laughs) 43 games, two interceptions with the Giants. Why do we always pick these mid-round cornerbacks who turn out like this? Someone, please, can we ever hit on a, a mid-round cornerback? I feel like we always pick mediocre mid-round quarterbacks, cornerbacks who never stick around, who get injured, like Aaron Robinson. Uh, uh, Darnay Holmes is another one that comes to mind. Just don't ever stick around. So, Jaron Hosley drafted third round, 94th overall. Became free agent in 2016. He's out of league since 2016. And some of the players we could have had, Lamar Miller, who was pretty good for Miami for a while in Houston, I think. Ben Jones, a really good center. Kirk Cousins, who just got a bag in Atlanta. And Bobby Massey, an offensive lineman, who I think played for the Bears for a bit. So, Jerron Hosley, another guy, another Jerry Reese disaster. And who could forget Adrian Robinson, the tight end? Adrian Robinson was supposed to be a Aaron Hernandez, Rob Gronkowski, uh, Jimmy Graham type tight end for the Giants. He was this athletic freak, another project, 19 games, five receptions, 50 yards, and a touchdown. He turned out not to be anything more than a project. Drafted fourth round, 127th overall. He's been out of the league since 2014. We could have had Red Ellison, another guy we could have had early. Josh Norman, who played really well for Washington for a while. Dennis Kelly and Justin Bethel. But we got it in Adrian Robinson. Yo, Adrian, you suck. (laughs) All right, 2011, we move to 2011 as we move right along as we're slowly moving back in time. Some draft highlights from this year. Previous year, the Giants finished 10 and 6. Obviously, 2011, this season, this draft would lead eventually to the Super Bowl, the fourth one we won. And the Giants in this draft drafted the Prince, the Virgin Prince, Prince Amukamara, with the 19th pick and a guy who the Giants um, locker room liked to pick on. He used to throw him in the ice bath a lot. That wouldn't work today, but back then they used to pick on him. And Prince Amukamara. So speaking of which, Prince Amukamara comes on my bus list, and and some of you might have a problem with this because he really wasn't a terrible pro. He did last a long time in the league. He played for the Bears after the Giants. He didn't play terribly with the Giants, but he also wasn't, a guy who you expect drafted in the first round would would have been a long-term impact player. He was just okay. I mean, he had 113 games in the league, 10 interceptions, one interception return for a touchdown. He retired in 2019 as a giant. And as I said, he's the average pro, not worth the high pick. I mean, he was okay, but he wasn't a lockdown corner that you would hope he would be. And there were some players the Giants missed out on. Let's talk about them. Anthony Costanzo, before he retired, was a dominant left tackle. He was a really good player. Cameron Jordan, another good player. Cam Hayward, another good player. Muhammad Wilkerson, another good player. So the Giants pass on all those players, and they draft Prince of Mukamara. So, you know, Prince was average for the Giants. Marvin Austin, a guy who Giants have a long history of drafting defensive tackles, and this guy was a terrible bust. 26 games, no sacks. Drafted in the second freaking round by Jerry Reese, 52nd overall. Do you guys see it? 
Am I crazy? You see all these bad picks Jerry Reese had. When I say Jerry Reese was a terrible GM, people give me a hard time. Jerry Reese was a terrible GM. You want to know why Eli's the end of Eli's career was so ruined? It's because of picks like Marvin Austin, okay? Marvin Austin was a terrible bust. We could have had guys like Sheen Vereen, Torrey Smith, Randall Cobb, and Justin Houston, but we got Marvin Austin, who just you know, we couldn't re-sign our own guys. We had to bring in um, new guys who just weren't as good as the old guys. You know, we have a long history of not re-signing our defensive tackles. Dalvin Tomlinson, uh, I think William Joseph, uh, who was another guy. But we just never wanted to re-sign our defensive tackles, and they always go somewhere else, and they would always still be good, and we would try to replace them, and it would take us time to replace them, and then we would replace them, and eventually we would get rid of them. So <laughs> Marvin ha- Austin was not that player. Jarrell Jernigan, for those of you who are in your 30s and 20s, you probably remember this guy. This was a, a short little guy, 34 games, 38 receptions, two touchdowns. He's a guy who's drafted in the third round, another Jerry Reese, brilliant pick. Retired in 2014, he was another terrible bust. We could have had guys like Chris Conte, Mason Foster, KJ Wright, and Tyrod Taylor. We could have Tyrod as a backup back way back when, but we get Gerald Jernigan, who's just terrible, (laughs) but I'm not going to talk too much about Jernigan. I do remember him. He was not very good. He had some moments, but for the most part, he was pretty terrible. 2010 now. All right, 2010, we look back the previous year and and you see something there, which probably give some Giants fans PTSD, which we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, 2009 Giants finished eight and eight. In this draft, they drafted JPP, Jason Pierre-Paul with the 15th pick. They also drafted Linval Joseph with the 46th pick in the second round. And Matt Dodge was picked in the seventh round. And, and later in this season, later in this 2010 season, the one of the worst moments in Giants history would take place when the seventh round pick, Matt Dodge, would go back to kick the ball with less than 10 seconds to go. And he would kick the ball to Deshaun Jackson. And Deshaun Jackson would go crazy and he would sidestep the end zone and break our hearts, ruin our season. Tom Coughlin would go nuts and Matt Dodge would find himself somewhere else out of the league. But that shank by Matt Dodge was one of the worst moments in Giants history. And he was drafted in this draft. So let's talk about busts. And I'm not going to say Matt Dodge as a bust because I'm only doing first round to fourth round picks, but he was a terrible player for the Giants. This one here, as I spoke about before, was a sad case for the Giants. Chad Jones never played a snap in the NFL. He was drafted in the third round, 76th overall by the Giants, and he got in a car accident in Louisiana. Um, He had a career-ending injury, leg shattered tibula and fibula. He never came back. He tried to. I think he tried to come back for a little while, but he just gave up. Just terrible bad luck. And it just was terrible for the Giants because they could have drafted Manuel Sanders. They could have had Eric Decker, uh, Corey Peters, and Jimmy Graham, who early on in Jimmy Graham's season in career, he was really, really good. And he's still around, I think. Or maybe he just retired. But Chad Jones, another, like David Wilson, another unfortunate draft pick by the Giants that just unfortunately had bad luck. Oh, Philip Diller. Here's another Jerry Reese pick, okay? (laughs) <laughs> seven career games, seven tackles. I could get seven tackles probably. If I start working out now and got ready for training camp, even at my old ass age of 40 something, I could probably get seven tackles in a season. You just stick me in a gap, probably. I get seven tackles. All right. This guy was drafted in the fourth round, 115th overall. He's been out of the league. Uh, he was out of the league after this season. We could have a guy, like, we could have had a guy from the Legion of Boom, Cam Chancellor, instead of this guy, this Dillard guy. <laughs> We could have Geno Atkins and Al Woods, but we got a Dillard, and he was out of the league really quickly. All right, 20, 2009 now. All right, 2009 draft highlights. Previous season, 12-4, and four, the Giants were in 20, 2008 a year. They should have won the Super Bowl if it wasn't for Plaxico Burris, who decided to go to nightclub and take a gun with him, and he shot himself in the leg. And as a result... He ended his career with the Giants and ended our any chance of us returning to the Super Bowl and being repeat Super Bowl champions. That Giants team 2008, you guys can tell me in the comments, that freaking Giants team was so freaking good. And we just ran over everyone. I remember the Steelers game. We destroyed the Steelers. I think the Steelers eventually, if I remember correctly, the Steelers and the Cardinals would go to the Super Bowl this season and the Steelers would win the Super Bowl. But 
Unfortunately for us, we were the best team in the league until Plaxico shot himself. And um, we were bounced in the first round by the freaking Eagles. And that was, I remember that Jeffrey Lurie was on Lurie or Lurie or whatever his name is, the owner of the Eagles was on a, a sideline and he was so happy because we freaking lost and it was just terrible. But that's the Giants. That's the bad luck we had against the Eagles. And we still have bad luck against the Eagles. And I think a lot of our issues with the Eagles started around this time. And so in this draft, we got Hakeem Nix with the 29th pick in the first round. It was Hakeem Nix wasn't really with the Giants too long, but he obviously had that really good playoff run for us in our fourth Super Bowl run where he had that great touchdown against the Green Bay Packers in the back of the end zone right before halftime when we went into Lambeau and we upset the Packers again. And um, Hakeem Nix will always have a special place in my heart. Him and Cruz and Manningham, they were awesome. All right. Here's another just <laughs> or Sintum. He this guy was terrible. He, he, you know, here's the thing. It's like the Giants tried so hard to get a linebacker, and they would get guys like this, guys who are just terrible. And Clint Sintum was another example of a terrible linebacker. 24 games, one sack. He was drafted in the second round, 45th overall. He was a monumental bust. He's been out of the league since 2012. We could have had guys like Connor Barwin who played for the Eagles. LaShawn McCoy, who also played for the Eagles, kicked our asses for a bit. And Max Unger. But we got Clint Sinem, who was really terrible. (laughs) That's all I can say about him. Will Beatty, another guy that was on the Giants who I guess you could say at times he was serviceable. He had an 89 career games. He's another guy who tried to go to Eagles, by the way, and didn't work out. Uh, drafted in the second round, 60th overall by the Giants. Never really developed as the offensive tackle of the future for the Giants. Who's out of the league since 2017. We could have drafted Mike Wallace, who was a really good wide receiver, or Michael Johnson. But we drafted this guy, and he never really lived up to his potential. Something like we have with offensive tackles. Guys like Eric Flowers. Guys like, unfortunately, Evan Neal. And perhaps Will Beatty. And another guy, Matt Pert, guys who just never developed for the Giants. So this history of not developing offensive tackles goes back pretty far. Oh, Ramsey's Barton. Before 13 was in vogue with Odell Beckham Jr., there was a guy called Ramsey's Barton for you old Giants fans like me. When Ramsey's Barton came to the Giants, we were hopeful that he would be the next Plaxico for us. And he turned out to be a Plaxico, (laughs) a Fox Plaxico. 29 games, 29 receptions, 394 yards, and no touchdowns. He was drafted in the third freaking round. Another Jerry Reese terrible pick. Uh, 85th overall. Out of the league since 2012. And we could add guys like Ladarius Reb and Jared Cook. Jared Cook, who's a really good Tight end in the league for a very long time. But we got Ramsey, who's Barden, who was terrible. <laughs> and we think of Barden, Gerald Jernigan. Um, <laughs> who's the guy? Adrian Robinson. Just terrible picks by Jerry Reese. Ramsey's Barden. Terrible. Travis Beckham, another terrible guy we picked. And this was another tight end, if I remember correctly. Uh, he was the Fox Shockey replacement. 48 games, 26 receptions, 264 yards, three touchdowns. Drafted third round, 100th overall, out of league since 2012. Could have guys like Henry Melton, Glover Quinn, and Austin Colley, who was really good for the Colts for a little bit. But we had Travis Beckham, who was supposed to replace Jeremy Shockey. Like Adrian Robinson tried to replace Jeremy Shockey, and that didn't work out. We, I, I just I have nothing to say about this guy. This guy was terrible. Another terrible Reese draft pick. Andre Brown, another guy, another not-so-good pick by the Giants. 22 games, 876 yards, and 11 touchdowns in 22 games. He was drafted in the fourth round. He was out of the league in 2013. We could have had Johnny Knox before he had a terrible career-ending injury, was really good for the Bears, and Greg Tuller, but we got Andre Brown, who was, what could Brown do for us? Pretty much nothing. All right, now we move to 2008, and obviously – we talk about 2008, we think about the Super Bowl. Um, um, the 16-0 and Patriots, who we fought tooth and nail last game of the season, wound up losing, but then we faced them in the Super Bowl and we shocked the world. Giants finished 10-6 in 2007, and there were a lot of key contributors drafted in this draft, which would key into Super Bowl win number four. And I know before any of you comment in the comments about the pitcher, that is from Super Bowl four. That is Mario Manningham, that wonderful pass that 
Eli Manning threw to Manningham on the sideline, which pretty much got us in position to win the game. So, so who were the key contributors who we drafted in this draft? Kenny Phillips, Terrell Thomas, Mario Manningham. So you look at those names, those guys were really big, important parts of the successful run we would have towards that fourth Super Bowl. So let's talk about busts. Just can't forget about this guy, Brian Keel, 72 games, one sack, one interception, another attempt for a linebacker that failed by Jerry Reese. And we are getting close to the beginning of the Jerry Reese era for the Giants. Uh, drafted fourth round, 123rd overall. Only lasted in the league to 2013. We could have had a guy like Jacob Tammy, who was a pretty decent tight end for the Colts, for Peyton Manning. Brandon Carr, Orlando Skandrick, who played for the Dallas Cowboys for quite some time. And I think he also played for the Giants very shortly, but didn't really stick with them. And Zachary Bowman. But Brian Keel was the guy that just never did anything. And that was it with him. All right, 2007, which was a great year for Giants fans. So let's talk about the draft from that year. All right. So the previous year in 2006, which was Tiki Barber's last season, Giants finished eight and eight. And there was a lot of turmoil with the Giants. You know, Tiki wanted to go on NBC. He wanted to be a sports journalist and his mind wasn't on football anymore. And eventually Tiki has become a sports journalist. He is now with Evan Roberts on WFAN in New York and has a nice niche in his career as a journalist. And now let me tell you this. Tiki Barber is the greatest running back in Giants history, even though this didn't really end well for him. Jerry Reese's first draft was 2007, replacing Ernie Accorsi, who retired. Giants key contributors, they drafted a bunch of key contributors. And you have to wonder if some of these guys weren't guys that perhaps Ernie Accorsi was thinking about. Because as you know, when a new guy takes over, some of the guys from the previous regime are still there. And some of these guys were guys like Aaron Ross, Steve Smith. Kevin Boss, Ahmad Ratch are all key contributors to both those Super Bowl wins the Giants would have in 07 and 11. So even though Reese was the GM, I am going to give credit, some credit at least, to the previous general manager, Ernie Corsi, because I think he had a hand in some of these picks. So let's talk about Jay Alford for a second. And Jay Alford had one shining moment for the Giants in the Super Bowl against the Patriots, where he had that big sack against Tom Brady at the end of the game, in the waning moments of the game, that really nice sack of Tom Brady, which pretty much iced the game. He had 36 games in his career with three and a half sacks, and he was drafted in the third round, 81st overall, way overdrafted. Kind of guys like Charles Johnson, Brandon Mibain, Marshall Yanda, and Trent Edwards, if you wanted a backup quarterback. J.J. Alford was a guy that had his one shining moment when it mattered most. And there's another guy on this list, which, um, well, I won't talk about because he is a guy that wasn't blue. Um, it wasn't in the top four rounds, but he's a guy who had one shining moment in the Super Bowl. And you know, guys, I'm sure know who that is. Ernie Corsi area. So we now move into the Ernie Corsi era as we're moving closer and closer to the beginning of the modern era of the New York Giants. I appreciate all of you who are still here about an hour into this. I know it's a long video, but I think it's it's fun and educational to go through all these picks because obviously with us looking at the draft in a couple of weeks, just rest assured to know there are going to be some busts. We're not going to hit on every pick. So let's go keep going. Let's talk about 2006. So 2006 draft highlights in 2005 Giants finished 11 and five. If I remember correctly, they had a really big win against the Raiders, the final game of the season. This was Ernie Accorsi's last quote unquote draft. This was the draft the Giants got Matthias Kiwanuka in the first round at pick 32. And he also got Barry Cofield in round four, two guys that would be big contributors in following years. Here's a guy that did not pan out for the Giants, Sonoris Moss, uh, 37 games, 39 receptions, 421 yards, three touchdowns. He was not as good as his brother Santana or as good as his cousin Zachary or Zach Moss as we know him now, but Sonoris Moss was a punt return guy. He was a special teams guy. He was drafted way too early in the second round, 44th overall. He was out of, year by, out of the league by 2009. And we could have had a bunch of other guys. We could have Lundell White, who had a really good start in his career in the NFL. Greg Jennings, who is a great Packer. Anthony Fasano, who did flash for a little while. I think he was on the Cowboys for a little bit. Andrew Whitworth. 
do you imagine if you had Andrew Whitworth for a left, left tackle for 15, 20 years? Could have had Andrew Whitworth, and I know we we kind of flirted with bringing him in as a free agent, but the Giants, instead of Sonoris Moss, could have had Andrew Whitworth. And they could have had also these two players, Devin Hester, who's in the Hall of Fame, the greatest punt returner, kick returner in the history of the NFL, and Maurice Jones-Drew, who also was very good for the Jaguars for a good period of time. But we got Sonoris Moss, so that wasn't the best pick, Mr. Corsi. Jarris Wilkinson is another bad pick. Third round, 96th overall, out of the league in 2012. Uh, 58 games, two forced fumbles, no sacks. Just not a good player. We could have had guys like Owen Daniels, Jahari Evans, Brandon Marshall, who had a really good career for a little while with the Broncos and the Jets. I think he played for the Giants for a year and then was disgruntled and kind of quit because he was pretty much out of gas. And then Steven Guskowski, who replaced uh, Adam Vinatieri for the Patriots and went on for many years to be a really good kicker. And it was, it's, you'll see this as we move forward and forward into the past, you'll see punters and kickers drafted really early considering their contemporaries of today. No one would draft a punter or a kicker in the third round. You see it quite often in these upcoming years. So Steven Guskowski drafted a little bit later than Jairus Wilkinson, but Jairus Wilkinson was a terrible player. And now we're in 2005. So here's some highlights from the previous season. Uh, Giants finished 6-10 in 2004. They did draft some key contributors in this draft. Corey Webster had Justin Tuck, the great Justin Tuck, and the great Brandon Jacobs. So this was a really good draft for the Giants. And it's funny because this draft, they didn't have a first-round pick. They lost the first-round pick because of the Eli manning Phillip rivers trade there. Chargers would have eventually, I think they drafted Sean Merriman, if I remember correctly, who started out really well in the league, got injured, and then tried to become a professional wrestler, I think. And that didn't work out with the WWE, and now he's retired. But that was this draft, believe it or not, considering how little assets the Giants had, this turned out to be a really good draft and a very good draft for the future of the Giants. You can only hope when you have this little amount of assets that you're able to convert like the Giants did this year. All great players for the Giants and helped contribute to those two later Super Bowl wins we would have in a couple of years. And then, as you can see, there really wasn't any busts for that year to talk about, so I'm not even going to talk about it. So we're going to go to 2004. In 2004, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about 2003. Giants finished 4-12, and 12, which put them in position – for the drafting of Eli Manning, they had um, Kerry Collins as quarterback in 2003. It was a terrible season. Kerry Collins wasn't really happy about the fact of being a backup to Eli or whomever the Giants were to draft. So the Giants eventually released, I think they released Kerry Collins. And then they brought in Kurt Warner, who pretended to be a nice guy. But I don't think Kurt Warner was very happy about being a backup either because Kurt Warner started out the season and then Coughlin pulled him. And the Giants struggled the rest of the way. And probably they could have made the playoffs in 2004 if they stuck with Warner, but they decided to pull the plug for Eli. So the story is the Giants um, wound up getting Eli Manning because Archie Manning, the former quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, who struggled for many years down in the bayou, did not want his son to go to the San Diego Chargers at the time because the Spanos family owned it. And he felt that he, his son would run into the same sort of situation that he did in New Orleans. So there was this mild protest. If you watch the videos on YouTube of this draft, fans were not happy. The Mannings were booed. Eli was booed pretty viciously, actually. And what eventually would happen is the Giants would trade for Eli. They would they would trade. They would trade Philip Rivers, who the Giants actually drafted in this draft. Historically, the Giants drafted Philip Rivers, but he never played for the Giants, obviously. And then they sent that first rounder with Philip Rivers. I think there was other compensation, but the major compensation was the first rounder, which the next season, it's not 2025, it's 2005. And it was for Sean Merriman, if I remember correctly. So, and the Giants also had another really good pick that was a very influential and consequential pick as they drafted Tom Coughlin's son-in-law, Chris Snee, with the second round pick number 34, which turned out to be a great pick for the Giants, a multiple Pro Bowl winning guard. I, I, he was just one of the greatest Giants that played on the offensive line and was part of that offensive line with Deal and O'Hara. Just such a really good offensive line. And, you know, I wish we had an offensive line like we had back then because it was just so freaking good. So 
Let's talk about some of the busts. Reggie Torbo, 100, 104 games, four forced fumbles, six and a half sacks, drafted fourth round, 97th overall, out of the league since 2010. Could have drafted guys like Sean Phillips, Jericho Cotri, the Jet, Nathan Vasher, Anthony Maddox, and the Hall of Famer Jared Allen. Giants could have drafted Jared Allen. Do you imagine having Jared Allen on our defensive line? You know, Strahan was coming towards the end of his career. They could have just had Jared Allen pick up right where Strahan was leaving. So, unfortunately, the Giants did not draft Jared Allen. I think Jared Allen will wind up on the Vikings. And the Giants would – they'd still get Justin Tuck. They'd still have a pretty fearsome defensive line for a while until mid-2010s. So that's when things started to tail off. But Reggie Torbar, just not a good pick. So now we move to 2003. We're getting closer to the millennium now. Um, so in 2002 – the Giants were 10-6. 2003 would be Jim Fossil's last season as a head coach. He's a guy that's very underrated by Giants fans. Jim Fossil was a really good coach for the Giants, and he something happened between him and Mara because he was never welcomed back to the Giants after he left. And it's a sad, and he also passed away, God rest his soul. But Jim Fossil, his son John Fossil is a really good coordinator and coach, and Jim Fossil doesn't get enough credit for what he did with the Giants for a short period of time when he was with them. Cause he was with them, I think for about six years or seven years, something like that. So the Giants had a pretty um, really good draft here. They drafted William Joseph first round pick 25. And they also picked a bunch of other key contributors, guy like OC Humanor. Just, I remember that game against the bears. I was watching a bar in Chicago and he was just lighting up Jay Cutler. I, I really enjoyed that immensely. David deal, another guy, another funny story, David deal, I knew two people in Chicago, one girl I used to run with who I was kind of dating. Um, she was she knew David Deal, and we used to talk about him. And, of course, David Tyree, helmet catch. That will always go down as his shining moment with the Giants. He had that great Super Bowl for the Giants against the Patriots. So we have to talk about some busts. And Vishanti Sanchenko is the first one we're going to talk about. And to be honest with you, he's not really terribly a bust. He was only average, but for the Giants, he was a bust because he didn't really stay with the Giants. 149 games, 245 receptions, 2,679 yards, 27 touchdowns. And he was drafted third round, 91st overall. He's been out of league since 2013. We could have guys like Montre Holland, Brady James, Asante Samuel. You guys probably remember Asante Samuel and Terrence McGee. We're going to start getting into some names here. Just to warn you, some of you younger views who are young, you're probably not going to know these people because they were before your time, but I'll try to fill you in on who they are. I'll tell you if they were good or not and what they did in the league. I'll try my best. I, I'll try to remember. I might screw some stuff up because of my memory, but I think my memory is usually pretty good. So um, those are some of the players we could have had instead of Vishanti Sanko, who, who wound up going to Vikings, and he was okay for them as a tight end, but he didn't really stick around the Giants. Roger Baber is a guy that I don't even remember. He only played in – and there's a reason I don't remember. He's only in seven games. No no interceptions. He was a cornerback, I think, for the Giants, and he was drafted out of Texas, fourth round, 123rd overall. He didn't last in the league. That's why I probably don't remember. He was out by 2004. We could have guys like Brandon Lloyd and Robert Mathis. Robert Mathis would have been a great player. Robert Mathis was really good for a very long time, but we got Roger Babers and – he didn't last. He was the only in the league for a cup of coffee. So now we're in 2002. And 2002 was a very consequential jack for the Giants. Previous season, they finished seven and nine in 2001. That, of course, was the tragic season of 9 11. Um, there was a pall over the Giants in all of New York at the time. For those of you who are old enough to remember, you know what I'm talking about, you young guys who were born after 9 11. All I can tell you is that that was a really tough time for New Yorkers. I lived in New Jersey at the time. I had just graduated college. That's how old I am. And it, I'll never forget the night before the stillness in the air. I think it was a full moon and I was driving home. I was doing martial arts at the time. And I'll never forget the stillness in the air. And the next day, how beautiful the sky was. And I was listening to Giants game, actually. Giants were playing Monday night football against the Denver Broncos on the radio. I'm driving home, listening to the game. And next morning I go into work and it's a beautiful blue sky day. And I go to my desk and I'm get my girlfriend calls me on the phone. She says a plane crashed in the world trade center and rest is history. And it was one of the hardest times in, in U S history, but um, I digress. So that was a very emotional time for the giants. Um, that draft in 2002, the giants would draft a very consequential player for the giants from Miami, Jeremy Shockey, um, round one, pick 14. And I always talk about it. I do my mocks. I don't like drafting tight ends early. 
this was a guy who was drafted pretty early by the Giants and right out off the bat. He was a monster for the Giants. He had a lot of key highlight plays. He was a scary guy, man. People did not like playing against Shockey. He was a giant through and through. But what would happen eventually for Shockey, unfortunately, is that Eli Manning was a bit intimidated by Shockey. And I think having Shockey go down with an injury the year the Giants won their third Super Bowl in 2007 was probably a blessing in disguise because things between Shockey and Eli weren't really working pretty good. I think there was some personality conflicts with Shockey and Barber. And it's it's amazing once Shockey was injured and up in the press box and one Tiki Barber was trying to become a journalist. That's when Eli Manning started to shine. So Jeremy Shockey, only have good thoughts from him. He was a heck of a giant early on in his career. But this draft outside of Shockey was quite terrible. And we'll get into some of these busts. Let's start with Tim Carter, man. 71 games, 87 receptions for 1,090 yards and four touchdowns. A second-round pick who only gets a little over 1,000 yards and four touchdowns. That's terrible, okay? And you look at the guys we could have drafted instead of this guy. Guys like Clinton Portis, who was really good for Washington Commanders for a while. Sheldon Brown, Antoine Randall L., a guy that was on the, I think he was I think he was on the on Pittsburgh Steelers for a while. And if you guys ever watched Silver Linings Playbook, um, there's a Robert De Niro scene where he's lamenting about Antoine Randall L. Just beat my eagle, la 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 la. Yeah, Antoine Randall L. was electric player. Back in the day, Antonio Bryan was another one. Deion Branch, who was with the Patriots, was a really good wide receiver. Will Weatherspoon, back in the day, there was a lot of Giants fans who wanted him. But Tim Carter was the guy the Giants picked, and he wasn't very good. Jeff Hatch, okay, and this is a cautionary tale here. Um, and the, please disregard the career st stats there because he was an offensive lineman, and I didn't update the slide. First boo-boo of the night for me, considering how many slides I created today. I'm glad that I got this far almost to the millennium without making a mistake. So drafted third round, 78th overall. He's out of the league really quickly. Uh, and he was really just a really bad bust. And he had drug issues, unfortunately, like a lot of people have. And he's rehabilitated his life. And I hold nothing against him. But his personal demons kept him from being a really good football player. And he had dealt with issues with the Giants. And the Giants could have drafted Josh McCown, who – was pretty much a long-term backup in the league, but lasted until a couple of years ago. Could have drafted the giant killer, Brian Westbrook. We could have saved ourselves a lot of agony if we drafted him. Chris Hope, Alex Brown, and David Garrard, who was a backup quarterback for the Jaguars for many years. So Jeff Hatch never really worked out for the Giants, but I wish him all the best wherever he is. 2001, okay, so we're almost at the millennium here. Giants in 2000 finished 12-4. The Giants clobbered, obliterated the Minnesota Vikings in an NFC Championship game and went on to the Super Bowl and just lost the terrible game, which I became very disinterested in at the time. A game, as you can see, where the Giants were completely dominated by the dominant Baltimore Ravens, guys like Ray Lewis, Tony Saragusa. Oh, that, they just kicked our ass, and, and that was just a terrible loss, and we lost to Trent Dilfer. And you wonder if maybe on a different year, if our team was a little bit different, maybe a different coach, perhaps we would have had a different game plan, but we got destroyed. Maybe we came into that game a little bit too high after that thrashing of the Minnesota Vikings. There's rumors that the issues with the Maras was because of after beating the Vikings. Apparently, Jim Fossil acted like we won the Super Bowl, and that rubbed some people the wrong way. So, unfortunately, that was a bad memory. Giants are four and one in Super Bowls, and this is their only loss. And it was against a really dominant Ravens team. And in this draft, the 2001 draft, they would draft two players that would play a big role in the future for the Giants. And those two would be Will Peterson and Will Allen, the two Wills. And they also drafted a reality star, the first reality star who would that I know of graced the Giants roster. And We'll talk about him in a second. Cedric Scott, a guy drafted in the fourth round, 13 games, no sacks, terrible player. We could have Carl Buckhalter, who was a running back for the Eagles for a while, and Ryan Deem, who I think was an offensive lineman. I think he may have been on the Colts, but I don't remember correctly. But um, he's this guy, Cedric Scott, wasn't very good. He was a defensive lineman, um, and he just wasn't good. And this is the aforementioned reality TV star, and he is more notoriety. He has more notoriety for his reality TV career than his football career. 
Three game, eight games, 562 yards, three touchdowns, four interceptions. Drafted fourth round, 125th overall by the Giants. Out of the league since 2003, was on the ABC's The Bachelor. He was The Bachelor. He's also on college football game day at times. We could have drafted A.J. Feely. We could draft the two other guys who were okay, but you know I don't really know much about them, so I won't talk about them. But Jesse Palmer was another of the long line of Giants backup quarterbacks who never did anything, or future quarterbacks that were supposed to be future quarterbacks that never did anything. I think Palmer went to Florida, too. I don't like Florida quarterbacks. Steve Spurrier, Tim Tebow. Florida quarterbacks never seem to do well in the NFL. So Jesse Palmer. Hmm. Just stuck to reality TV. <laughs> All right. Finally, turn of the millennium. We are now going to be headed back into the 20th century. And we are going to talk about the 1999 season. Seven and nine. Giants best pick from this 2000 draft was Cornelius Griffin, who was a good player. And the Giants also drafted a Heisman Trophy winner early on in this draft from a Big Ten school, as you can see in the in. The pitcher to the right, and this player is a guy that I have to lament about, and his name is Ron Dane, a big bust for the Giants. He played in 96 games in his career, 3,722 yards, 28 touchdowns, played for the Giants. I also think he played for the Broncos for a little while and then was out of the league. Uh, he was the Heisman Trophy League winner. He was expected to do a lot with the Giants, and he came in, and he was terrible. He wasn't very good. Um, Giants could have drafted two Jets players that were mainstays for them, Sean Ellis and John Abraham. Could have drafted Delta O'Neal, Julian Peterson, Sean Alexander, who was a running back for the Seahawks, who turned out to be very good for a short period of time, helped them get to a Super Bowl. And the venerable Chad Pennington, who was a Jet for a very long time, then came back and beat the Jets and broke their hearts. But those are the players we could have drafted in a very, very weak draft, the 2000 draft. And Ron Dane just wasn't a very good player. And he did not leave a lot of Giants with good Giants fans with good taste in their mouths. Ron Dixon. Ron Dixon had one electric play in the Super Bowl. And, well, he played in the Super Bowl, but he had electric play against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in a 2000 playoffs, drafted third round, second, third overall. Giants could have drafted another Jet, former Jet, Lavernius Coles. Uh, his career, 37 games, 696 yards, four touchdowns. Ron Dixon was a punt returner. He was a wide receiver, but it's just not really good. So we're not going to talk about Ron Dixon. So that's the end of him. All right, we're back, and unfortunately, I had a little technical difficulty with the stream yard, but I am back, and we will continue here in 1999. So 1999 was a draft where the Giants drafted a future Lions head coach in Dan Campbell, and they had a lot of busts. And, and in pre previous season, 1998, they finished 8-8. Eight and eight. So let's talk about some of the busts from 1999. Luke Pettigau, and I, I call him a bust because he stuck around for a while, but for a guy who was drafted in the first round, he never made it to Pro Bowls. He wasn't anything special. He was an average offensive tackle. He was out of the league by 2007, and the Giants could have had guys like Antoine Winfield, Patrick Carney, and John Jansen. They wound up picking Luke Pettigau as a left tackle who was average at best. He wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great. Not worth a first-round pick at 19 overall. Joe Montgomery. The next person we're going to talk about was drafted in the second round, 49th overall, out of the league since 20, 2002. Could have had Peerless Price, Randy Thomas, John Thornton, and Joey Porter, the great Pittsburgh Steeler. He only had 372 yards rushing with four touchdowns in his career with the Giants. Just not very good. So now we move to 1998. So 1998, the previous season in 1997, uh, Giants were 10-5-1. And, and 1997, when Jim Fossil's first season with the Giants, it was a really good start for Fossil. And in 1998, this was the first Ernie Accorsi draft as he replaced the great George Young. The Giants drafted Sean Williams, who was a defensive back. in um, I think it was a safety, actually. And a first round pick 24. So let's talk about busts. And I do say that Sean Williams was a bust here. Because the Giants could have had some players that were much better than him. He was not a guy that throughout, if he, for a guy who stuck around to 2007, you'd think he would be, have more of an impact. 
had 15 interceptions in his career with the career in the NFL. But we could have guys like Alan Fanica, Tony Parrish, Flazell Adams, who was with the Cowboys for many years as their left tackle, and Patrick Sertain, who has a son now in the NFL. But the Giants wound up getting Sean Williams, who wasn't that good. Joe Jervicious, a guy who is the pride of Chardon, Ohio, a guy that who started with the Giants in 133 career games, 4,119 yards, 29 touchdowns. He had one really good season with the Seattle Seahawks. He played for his hometown, Cleveland Browns, and he had more, it felt like he had more success away from the Giants, but he really wasn't that good, and he's definitely not worth a second-round pick. Giants could have had a guy like Olin Krutz, who was a mainstay for the Bears for many years on their offensive line, guy like Leonard Little and Mike Goff. So Joe Jervish is a guy that just honestly not worth the second round pick. <coughs> Excuse me. George Young era. So now we get into the final um, general manager that we will be talking about tonight. And that's George Young, who pretty much was the GM, the first part of the Giants modern era from 1979 to 1997. He's in the Hall of Fame. 1997. Previous year, Giants finished 6-10. and 10. Dan Reeves' final season was 1996. George Young's final season as GM. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Giants drafted Ike Hilliard, a guy who would play a big part for the Giants in upcoming years. First round, pick number seven. And Tiki Barber, who is, by many people, would, great, would agree, is the greatest modern running back in Giants history. I'm not going to say anything bad about Frank Gifford, but, but he was in a different time. Um, Tiki was drafted 36th overall. He also has a Hall of Fame brother, Rondé Barber, and eventually Tiki will make the Hall of Fame. There'll be two twin brothers in the Hall of Fame. And then there's this, this interesting pick here, which no one really talks about, but I think it is of importance. Giants drafted Brad Maynard, a punter, in the third round. As I said earlier, the Giants are going, they have a history of, of drafting punters and kickers. The teams in the NFL prior to 2000 would do that pretty often. And Brad Maynard stuck around for a very long time to 2011. He was with the Bears for many years, but that's a player that Giants drafted in this draft. So let's talk about some, some busts. Okay, Ryan Phillips is one of them. Um, 71 games, um, four interceptions, three and a half sacks. He was drafted in the third round. Out of year, out of the league by 2001, they could have had guys like Deuce, Scale, Deuce Staley, Jason Taylor, Bertrand Berry, and the Mike Vrabel, who would star for the New England Patriots and eventually become a really good coach in the NFL but they get Ryan Phillips who didn't stick around very long. Now we move to 1996. So 1996. So let's talk about 1996 for a second. We've got to talk about the previous season, 95 giants were five at 11 giants would draft a cornerstone, a cornerstone wide out Amani Toomer with the second round um, 34th pick. I like to compare Amani Toomer to a guy that's currently being targeted and looked at by the giants. And that guy is Roma Dunze a similar type of player the Giants drafted Monty Toomer back in this draft in 96. They also drafted Danny Cannell, who was a replacement for the Duke quarterback that people used to hate back then. And that guy was Dave Brown. And they drafted Danny Cannell, a guy from Florida State. Fourth round pick 130, another terrible quarterback. This was the dark ages between Phil Sims and Kerry Collins, a lot of guys like Kent Graham, Danny Cannell, Dave Brown, just really terrible quarterbacks. And so first um, bust here we're going to talk about, it was a big one, and that one is Cedric, Cedric Jones, 15 sacks, seven forced fumbles in 73 games in his career, fifth pick in the draft, and he was out of the league by 2000. And you look at the players the Giants could have had here, it's, it's heartbreaking. Guys like Marvin Harrison – who is a Hall of Famer who played for the Colts, who has a son that perhaps could be on the Giants. Terry Glenn, Eddie George, who was really good for a short period of time with the Texans. Willie Anderson, Ray freaking Lewis. Think about if the Giants drafted Ray Lewis here. That would have changed the balance of power for that Super Bowl in 2000. Giants perhaps would have five rings instead of four right now. So this was a very consequential miss by the Giants. And Eric Moulds, who had a really good career out of Tennessee in college, and he comes to the NFL with the Buffalo Bills and played well for them. But Cedric Jones was a total bust. 1995. So in 94, Giants were 9-7. and seven. Giants would draft Tyron Wheatley, Tyrone Wheatley, first pick in a 17th round, 17th pick in the first round. Another running back in the history of the Giants that just didn't pan out the way we wanted him to. He was not Rodney Hampton. He was not Joe Morris. He wasn't even Otis Anderson. He turned out to be more like Ron Dane, just not a really good running back. T 
terrible draft with the best pick being Charles Way, who was picked later in the draft in the sixth round. I think Way was a fullback, if I remember correctly, and he was pretty much the best pick in this draft. Um, Tyrone Wheatley, as I said, was a major bust for the Giants. He had 124 games in his career, 4,962 rushing yards, 40 touchdowns, very mediocre running back for where he was drafted. And the Giants missed out on two Hall of Famers, Ty Law and Derek Brooks. Imagine drafting Derek Brooks and Ray Lewis in subsequent years. The Giants could have been set up pretty well, but unfortunately they didn't do that. Um, Rodney Young's another guy who is really not good. Uh, 33 games, six tackles. They could have had two guys that were pretty damn good in the league. In the third round, Antonio Freeman, who was really good for the Packers for a long time, and Ken Irvin, who I think played for Buffalo, if I remember correctly, who was good. And Sam Shade wasn't bad either. But Rodney Young was a guy who was another bust. George Young, not the best picks towards the end of his career with the Giants. 94, Giants were 11-5 in 1993. This draft will always be remembered for Jason Seahorn. Jason Seahorn, who was one of the best Giants um, defensive backs they've ever had. Unfortunately, he had a terrible injury, and it, it pretty much ended his career of him being dominant. But Jason Seahorn was picked in the second round in this draft, um, pick 59. And this was um, Dan Reeves' first season with the Giants in 1990. I think it was 94 was his first season. So um, busts Thomas Lewis. Uh, first round pick by the Giants, um, wide receiver, just not very good. 74 receptions, 1,032 yards, five touchdowns. And the Giants missed out on a freaking load of Hall of Famers because of this guy. They could have Jeff Burroughs, Isaac Bruce, who would have been a million times better than this guy. Darnay Scott, Kevin Mawe, who was the Jets Hall of Fame center for many years. Larry Allen, another another freaking Hall of Famer and Burt Emanuel, who was even Burt Emanuel, who's not a Hall of Famer, was a pretty damn good wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, Thomas Lewis, Giants pick, a, a made a terrible pick. Thomas Randolph, another Thomas, um, second round pick um, to not really much to choose from, but he wasn't a very good player for the Giants. 95 games, six interceptions. They could have Brenston Buckner, or Fernando Smith. Uh, just not that much to pick from where the Giants were picking, but this guy wasn't very good. 1993. So 93, the Giants finished six and 10 the previous season, 92. Ray Hanley was fired. One of the worst mistakes the Giants ever made was giving him the head coaching job after uh, Bill Parcells, quote unquote, retired. The Giants drafted Hall of Famer Michael Strahan, um, second round pick, pick number 40, and Jeff C. Armstead, eighth rounder, 2072. Mainstays, two really good defensive players in this draft. And here's some busts. Marcus Buckley, 101 games, one and a half sacks, one forced fumble. Not a really good linebacker, just terrible. Third round pick, legal issues after retirement. Could have drafted a Hall of Famer in Will Shields on the offensive line. Mike Compton, Jason Elam, who was a long-term kicker in the league, first with the Broncos, and Ray Buchanan, who also was in the league for a while. I think he was in Atlanta Falcons, if I remember correctly. But Marcus Buckley, just not very good. So 92 now, we're moving closer towards the Parcells are in this previous season, Giants first day and eight under Handley. And um, Ray Handley was hired and replaced the quote unquote retiring Bill Parcells, who would resurface in the league several times with the Patriots, the Cowboys and the Jets. Uh, best pick of this draft was Keith Hamilton, uh, fourth round pick, um, pick 99. And Kent Graham, one of the um, quarterback hell uh, quarterbacks Giants would pick during this period, was the eighth round pick 211. Kent Graham looked like Phil Simms, but he wasn't Phil Simms. Um, Derek Brown, first round pick, 14th overall, was a tight end pick that was terrible for the Giants. Only 105 career games, 43 receptions, 401 yards, man. That's terrible. One touchdown, monumental bust. Giants could have had players like Chester McLaughlin, who was a defensive player, Dale Carter, Alonzo Spellman, Robert Porche was a defensive player, Chris Mims, Jimmy Smith, Darren Woodson, who was a really good player, and LeVon Kirkland, who was a really good player for the Steelers for many years. But they get Derek Brown, who was terrible. 1991, obviously, now we look, we're getting closer to the beginning of this draft and closer to the end of this video. For those of you who are still here, thank you. And please like, share, and subscribe if you like this um, historical content in these long videos. I don't do long videos all the time, but this is one's a special one. So we're looking back at 1991 um, draft highlights. The previous year was the big win in the Super Bowl. The Giants had over the Bills, Super Bowl 25, second championship. 
Joshua 13-3 in 1990, beat the San Francisco 49ers in the playoffs with the Matt Barr field goal, won and went on to squeak out a win against the Buffalo Bills, the first loss of four in a row for the Bills on the um, missed field goal wide right by Scott Norwood. Um, many of you probably weren't alive for that, but I was. I was um, a teenager, and I remember that game very clearly. Um, best pick of this draft for the Giants was Ed McCaffrey, third round um, pick, father of Christian McCaffrey, and a lot of useless picks. The thing that's sad about this pick is that Chris, um, Ed McCaffrey would go on to have a really nice career with both San Francisco and the Broncos um, as he would move on from the Giants um, a couple of years after being drafted by them. And his son obviously is is much as good, but much better, I guess you could say, so far in his career, um, Christian McCaffrey, as he is was a MVP candidate last season. So here's some bu busts from this draft. Here's another first-round mistake, Jared Bunch. Why do you draft a full back in the first round? Beats me, but this was a different era. 48 games, 629 yards, five touchdowns, drafted 27th overall, a full back. Giants could have had fucking Brett Favre. Excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. They could have had Brett Favre, and they, dra and they drafted this bunch of shit. <laughs> you know? Roman Pfeiffer, who was a really good player for a long time. Eric Bieniemy, who was a decent running back, who was an even better coach. Ricky Waters, who had a, a really good time. Early in his career with San Francisco, uh, Daryl Lewis and Phil Hansen, who I think was a defensive player that was pretty good. But Jared Bunch was really bad. 1990, okay, so now we are getting into the 80s and we're coming towards the end of this video. So the Giants in 1989 were 12-4. and four. The best pick of this draft by far was Rodney Hampton, um, 24th pick in the first round, 27. My lacrosse number was based on my love of Ron, Rodney Hampton, one of my favorite players growing up. And, and there was a lot of more useless picks in this in this draft. Uh, Mike Fox was a was a bust second round pick, 51st overall. Could have had Ricky Prohl, Eric Davis, Glenn Parker was a good offensive lineman. Anthony Pleasant, good defensive line. Fred Barnett wound up getting Mike Fox, who was terrible. Uh, 113 games, 17 sacks. 1989, okay, 1989, previous season, 88. James Giants finished 10 and 6. Several cornerstone players were drafted in 89. Those players were Brian Williams, first round. Pick 18, Dave Meggett, little Meggett, who had legal problems after leaving the NFL, but he was a heck of a punt returner, a really good player for the Giants, fifth round pick. Howard Cross, who still is heard on Giants Airwaves, sixth round pick, who lasted in the league for quite some time. And Myron Guyton, eighth round pick, pick 218. If you listen to old Pat Summerall broadcasts, he would say Myron Guyton of the New York Giants. And, you know, I love old. Pat Summerall, John Madden games. And I just, the way um, Summerall would enunciate some of the players' names was just really, there's nobody like him. And, and those of you who are too young to remember Pat Summerall, please look up on YouTube some old Giants games because him and Madden were just, they were great. That's all you can say. So Bob Cratch, okay. So let's talk about Bob Cratch, the Cratch of the offensive lineman. Third round pick, 64th overall. The Giants could have had a Don Beebe, Jerry Fontenot, but they got Bob Cratch, who was pretty much a reserve offensive lineman. As you see in the picture there, he did play for the Giants in the Super Bowl. He wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great. Um, third round pick for the Giants. Now 1988. All right, previous season, 87, 6 and 9 Giants. And I think that was a strike shortened season, if I remember correctly. And the Giants drafted Jumbo Elliott, their franchise left tackle in this draft in 1988. Second round pick. Pick 36. I love Jumbo. He was a great player for the Giants and was an integral part of their Super Bowl win in 1990. So here's some more busts to talk about. Eric Moore, another first round, early first round embarrassment. First round, first round, 10th overall. Could have had Michael Irvin, who was picked the next pick by the damn Cowboys. Keith Jackson, Anthony Miller, Randall McDaniel, Hall of Famer for the Vikings, I think it was, and Craig Ironhead Haywood. They pick Eric Moore who just wasn't in the league, 84 games, and never did anything for the Giants. He was a, a pretty much an offensive lineman that was, I guess, okay, but nothing special. 1987, all right, so the previous season, 86, Giants won their first Super Bowl against the Denver Broncos, beating John Elway, finished 14-2. and two. Giants had probably one of their best teams ever that year, and in 87, they drafted a bunch of key contributors for the next Super Bowl, which would take place in 1990. Those players were Mark Ingram, first round. Steven, touchdown, Baker, Maker, Baker, third round, 83rd pick. And then Doug Riesenberg, another really good pick for the Giants, sixth round, 168th overall. 
it's funny how the Giants were able to develop offensive linemen in late rounds back in the past, and they can't can't draft a first round offensive lineman for shit now. But you know, in the past they could draft, and that's a credit to George Young. So here's another terrible pick, unfortunately, by George Run is Adrian White. 70 games, four interceptions. Second round pick could have had Mark Carey, Jerry Ball, who John Madden used to love. He's a big, big dude. And Henry Con- or Henry Thomas. So that was not a great pick by the Giants there. 1986. Okay, obviously, 86 was the year we won the Super Bowl later that year. But that is the year of this draft. So let's look back at 85. 85, Giants finished 10-6 and six on the cusp of making a nice little run in the playoffs until they went to Soldier Field in Chicago. And Sean Landetta had a nice terrible muff punt that was blocked for a touchdown and the bears, the 85 bears, one of the greatest teams ever just beat the giants and destroyed them. And the giants were set on their way towards getting ready for 86. But this season, the sixth draft was a lot of key contributors were drafted guys like Mark Collins, Eric Howard, and the great pepper Johnson were picked in this draft. Here are some busts. Eric Dorsey is a bust first round 19th overall could have Will Wolford, who's a really good offensive lineman, Tim McGee, Neil Anderson, Ernest Givens, and Webster Slaughter. You talk about some really good wide receivers there, Ernest Givens, Webster Slaughter. They, they picked Eric Dorsey, who was just like, he was okay, but he wasn't very good. He's a defensive line guy. 1985. 1985. So previous season, Giants finished 9-7 and in 1984. Now, I talked about this. For those of you who have stuck by for this whole video, I said there. I said there's a Giants content creator called the Entertainer. There is a former Giant that looks like him, at least in my mind. And that guy would be Mark, the great Mark Bavaro. There is a resemblance if you look at Mark Bavaro to the Entertainer. So, uh, Mark Bavaro, one of the greatest tight ends in Giants history, if not the greatest tight end, was drafted in the fourth round, pick 100. Uh, he had a lot of memorable plays for the Giants. He was a bloody. He'd be beaten up, bloodied. He'd drag defenders, and he was a great player. And he was a guy that, for those of you who are too young to remember, he was really good giant. And um, he was on the Giants for quite some time. And um, he wound up going to Eagles, another guy I think went to Eagles, who his career ceremoniously ended when he did that. But I'll never forget the great Mark Bavaro with the Giants, a guy that was a little before my time. I was really young when he was in his prime, but he was a guy that I hear a lot older Giants fans tell me that he was really good. All right, here's a guy here, the Giants drafted 19th overall, George Adams. Um, Jamal Adams, the, the former Jet, the former Seahawk, uh, his dad actually was drafted by the Giants early on, and he was a bust. Um, we could have drafted the Fridge. We could have drafted Randall Cunningham, went in a totally different direction with our franchise, and Kevin Glover. And Randall Cunningham, as you guys know, was the Eagles quarterback for many years, but we went with this guy, George Adams, who just wasn't very good. And he was a running back. Giants have a long history of drafting bad running backs. This guy, 886 yards, three touchdowns and 76 games for the Giants. All right. 84. Okay. This is a consequential draft for the Giants. They were 312 and one in 83, and they picked up a ton of great players in this draft led by the great Carl Banks. Um, third pick overall, William Roberts, Jeff Hosteller, who helped us win the fourth Super Bowl. Oh, no, the second Super Bowl, excuse me, um, in 1990. Gary Reasons, great linebacker, and Lionel Manuel, great wide receiver, all picked up in this great haul by George Young. He must have had a time machine because all these players were really good players for the Giants, and there were no busts. There, I can't say there was a bust in this draft. The Giants really hammered this draft really well. So 1983, we're almost at the end here. Giants finished 82-4-5 and five because of a strike short in the season. Um the 82 was the last season of Ray Perkins. Bill Parcells would be named head coach in 83. And the Giants would have um, basically one great player in Leonard Marshall, second round pick, and a lot of crap, 14 picks besides number 17 with 70, which were just really bad. I'm not even going to tell you. So Terry Kennard, I talked about Devin Kennard earlier. Terry Kennard in this draft, you think about the Giants, you think about Phil Sims as a quarterback. If the Giants did decide to move on from Phil Sims, they could have had somebody better and maybe they could have won a couple more Super Bowls because the Giants could have had Jim Kelly. They could have had Dan Marino. They could have also had Daryl Green, who lasted until the 21st century. That's how freaking good he was as a cornerback. And he also had some other good players in Willie Gold, Joey Browner, and Jim Jeffcoat. But they picked Terry Kennard, who just really he had an okay career, I guess, as a as a corner as a safety, but you know, long term, you can't compete to those guys like Dan Marino and Jim Kelly. 
and Daryl Green. Man, Giants really blew that one. <laughs> All right, 1982, okay, 1982, we're talking about 1981. And um, 1981, Giants finished 9-7. and seven. That was his first season of Lawrence Taylor. And in 1982, the Giants drafted Joe Morris, who would factor into a lot of future successes in the 80s. So here's some draft busts. Butch Wolferk drafted first round, 18th overall, out of the league since 1988. Could have drafted Bubba Paris and Andre Tippett. Andre Tippett is a Hall of Famer. But the Giants drafted a guy, another running back who just didn't do much. 81 games, almost 2,000 yards, eight touchdowns. So here we are in 1981. This is the final year we're going to talk about of the modern era of the Giants. And this was the previous year the Giants finished 4 and 12. Giants picked Lawrence Taylor, second pick in this draft, the most dominant position player ever to don a football uniform. There's nothing else for me to say about the great Lawrence Taylor. Okay. Lawrence Taylor was just, in my mind, greatest position player ever played football. And the Giants did have one bust in this draft in the second round. Um, Dave Young, who um, played in 29 games, 23, 213 yards, three touchdowns, and he passed away in 2023 towards the end of the year, or a rip. And the Giants could have Chris Collingsworth, who was a good wide receiver for the Bengals for many years. Neil Lomax, who was battered by the Giants. He was a quarterback for the St. Louis Cardinals. Mike Singletary and Howie Long. Imagine having one of those guys. We could have had them, but we drafted Dave Young. Um, God rest your soul. So that is all I have. That is all the draft bust at the modern era of the New York Giants. I think it was a quite a lightning discussion we had for a good two hours here. I appreciate you all for tuning in for this video. I know it's a long video. I know there's a lot to go over, but I think we had some fun. I think we learned a lot about Giants history as we move towards the draft, which is only about five weeks away from now. So I am excited about the draft. I'm sure all of you are, and we will be talking more about the draft in upcoming weeks, but this is it for now. I am exhausted. I am pooped. I am probably going to be in trouble for being up too late, but um, if you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate all your support. Appreciate all the growth this page is seeing. All of you, I can't do this without you. It's all, everything is because of you guys. And I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for everything for your likes and your subscriptions. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. I know a lot of you watch my videos and don't subscribe. It really helps when you subscribe. It helps the algorithms, helps grow the page. So if you can, please hit that subscription button. Really helps. Okay, so that's all I got. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And I'll be back in a couple of days with more Giants content. Until then, have a good night.